In this project, I'm going to be combining clay hand building and textiles design to create these mixed media vessels. The full classroom workbook for this project is available in the video description below. Included in this workbook is this project tutorial with instructions and pictures, as well as instructions on how to make the other types of clay vessels in this fibre and clay series. To begin the pinch pot, I need to turn this cube of terracotta clay into a sphere, so I'm knocking out the corners with the palm of my hand. Turn the ball around, gently lifting and tapping the corners and hard edges on the work surface. Then use both hands to pat, turn and roll the clay until it's smooth and round. Push your thumb into the centre of the ball. Notice how my left hand is cupping around the ball. This is so it keeps its rounded shape. Don't push your thumb all the way through to the other side. Stop about 15 millimetres or half an inch before the bottom. Rotate the ball around and around, pushing and pinching the walls out. It's important to keep moving the ball around, pinching and pressing the walls evenly as you go. You want the walls of the pinch pot to be roughly the same thickness all over. Again, both hands need to work as a team to make your pinch pot even. While my right hand is pinching, I'm cupping with the palm of my left hand to keep the outside of the ball rounded and smooth. Pinch the inside walls of the pot rather than the top lip. Don't let the top lip of the pot become too thin. If the pot starts to crack, it means your hands might be too dry. You can wet your hands with a damp sponge, but be careful you don't use too much water as this will weaken the clay and make it too soft. If the pot becomes too large to reach the bottom, you can use a spoon to gently press out the inside. Again, make sure the hand that's holding the pot is cupping around it to maintain the curved outside shape while you press the inside. Once the walls of the pot are about one centimetre thick all over, you can start to shape it. Here I'm pushing the top edges inwards so the overall shape becomes more spherical. It's up to you what kind of shaping you do at this stage. Just make sure you work all around the pot, trying to keep the thickness of the walls the same all over. Now I'm rolling the top lip over because for this project I need the top lip to be reasonably thick so I can add the rope detail. This is a wooden sculpting tool. It has a smooth rounded tip which is good for evening out the surface of the clay. As I press the inside, I'm still making sure that my other hand is supporting the outside surface. Here I'm using some slurry to help smooth the surface. I made the slurry by mashing a little bit of the same clay into some water with a fork. Again, be careful the clay doesn't become too wet. Use your hands and tools to keep working all over the surface of the clay. Now I'm using the rounded end of a brush to gently press a channel into the lip of the pot. Don't press too hard and support the side of the lip with your other hand. Now there's a little groove to put the rope into. I'm using 5mm cotton sash cord from the hardware. Cut a piece of cord and press it into the channel around the lip. Gently press and push the clay around the cord. This is a little bit fiddly, but worth doing as it means that the cord will look like it's a part of the pot, almost as if it's emerging from the clay. Trim the end of the cord so it fits snugly on the top. You might like to add some texture to the sides of the pot. Here I'm using a larger size of cord to press into the side. I'm doing this because the final piece will have the textile features emerging from the top and I'm hoping that this rope texture around the side will help to visually connect the two materials together in the final piece. I like to use a soft brush dipped in slurry to smooth out the clay but you can also use your fingers or a sponge or even a rubber kidney tool. It just depends on the shape of your sculpture and what works best for you. Now you need to add holes around the top of the pot. This is another pinch pot I made with earthenware paper clay. Use a food skewer to make the holes and wriggle the skewer to make the holes even larger. It's super important that the holes are large as the clay will shrink as it dries. 
You will need a large needle to attach the rope and if the holes are too small, you won't be able to thread the needle through them. I can't stress that enough. Make sure the holes are larger than you think you need because it's very hard to make them bigger once the clay is fired. Using the same sash cord, stick some masking tape around the end. This will stop the cord from fraying. Cut the cord on a diagonal so that it tapers to a point. This means it'll lay flat in the lip of the pot. I'm going to use wool so I'm using a larger needle. You need a length of wool about 2 metres to start off with. Don't make it too long as it may become tangled. Lay the end of the wool along the cord like this. Starting at the tapered end of the cord, wind the wool around, covering the tail of the wool. Wind the wool about 15 millimetres up the cord. Now you can attach it to the pot. This part is a little bit tricky. If you're having trouble, perhaps ask someone to hold it down for you. Thread the needle through the first hole. Pull the wool through and pull it tight so the cord is sitting snugly in the groove. Hold the cord in place with your fingers and wind the wool around the cord. You'll need to wind the wool under and around the whole pot. I'm winding the wool tightly together so that none of the white cord is showing, but you can leave gaps. It just depends on the look you're going for. This is another pot I made in which I left gaps in the thread so the white cord shows through. Keep winding the wool around until you reach the next hole underneath. Thread the needle through the hole, pull it tight like before. And keep winding to the next hole. Attaching the cord to the pot is probably the hardest part of this project and it may even take a few goes to get it right. When you get around to the point you started, you can keep going in the same manner but this time, instead of threading the wool through the pothole, you thread it under the line of cord like this. This will connect the top cord to the cord underneath. Then you wind it around the single cord a few times, maybe 10, and then thread the needle under the bottom cord to connect it. When you run out of wool, you can easily attach another piece. Thread up a new length of wool and lay the end over the tail like so. And then wind over the top of the tail of the old wool and continue along as before. To finish, attach another piece of tape around the cord to stop it from fraying. Then again cut it on an angle. You want the end to be tapered so you don't have a big lump at the end of the cord. You need good scissors for this. Now you need to cover and attach the end of the cord to the cord below. To do this I'm sewing the wool around the cord. When I'm pushing the needle through I'm not actually going around two cords. This time I'm pushing the needle through the top layer of the cord below. Once the tail of the cord is covered and secure, you can knot the wool by threading the needle back through the loop as you pull it through. To make it extra secure, thread the needle under a few of the wool loops and draw it through, clipping off the excess. And that's it. This is how the terracotta pot from the start of the video turned out. As you can see, you can also sculpt and shape the wool coiling to change its form as it rises from the pot. 
For more information on how to do this, I also have a video that demonstrates rope coiling in more detail. Or you might like to have a look at how I made these vessels using different types of clay hand building techniques. Just go to my channel. And thanks for hanging into the end of this video.